There, there we go. All right, can you hear me now? Is that, is that good? Yes. Okay, all right. Let the fun begin. We're going to have a lot of excitement and show you everything there is to know, possibly know, about urban sketching. If you've got any questions, just yell out, scream, holler. I actually taught elementary school for 40 years, so I'm watching. <laughs> oh, people, keep your hand to yourself back there. So, we're going to have a lot of fun. And and we're just going to start with how to do a sketch, how to start it, how to get it rolling, and all the little details that go along with it here. So, um, can you see okay over here? Should we? Can we? Can we focus in? Should we, can we bring it down so it's just this area so people can see? I know it's hard to see in the way, way, way back in the cheap seats. So we want to make sure everyone can see. Is that good? Good. That good. Well, get the. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so now here's the little sketch we're going to do. On Saturday, we're probably going to do four or five or six, seven, eight sketches, depending upon the time and how fast we can go. <laughs> the only thing you have to remember to say is slow down. So here we go. So we have a little sketch, and I want to put it onto the paper. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how in the world I'm going to get this onto my paper. So what I need to do is to first of all look at it, look at the size of it, look at the shape of it, and then look at the perspective of it, and then play with the perspective, play with the size. Have some fun with your sketches, don't get too tight with them. So I can bring it in a little bit, I can change it up. You know, are there any architects in the room here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So we can just have at it here. So, so we can kind of have fun with it. Now, some sketches, when they're out, just start with a pen and just go for it. Sometimes people use a uh, pencil. I use pencil. That way I make sure that I've got a pretty good start. Uh, also, there's the group Phoenix Urban Sketchers that meet once the first Saturday of every month. And you can go out and sketch with this group. They're not really a, a group. They just kind of meet. <coughs> and so we were down at Scottsdale at the uh, Solari Bridge down there, and we hiked around and stopped and took little sketches of the places, and we had a lot of fun. So you can just take your sketchbook, you can use any kind of sketchbook your heart desires, it really doesn't matter what size it is. You, since we are watercolors, we do like to have pretty hard paper, you know, this is about 140 pound paper, um, and this is, I like to use the old, which one is this, uh, the visual journal from Strathmore. It's not really 100% watercolor paper, but it's, it's a pretty good paper. If you really want to go all out, then go ahead and get a good 100-pound uh, cotton paper. And they make some nice journals like that. So we've got to put this onto our paper. So how are we going to do it? So what I usually try and figure out is where is the middle of this thing? Where is the middle of it? So I kind of go on the side and think, well, the middle is going to be hmm, right about here, I think if I look there, so you kind of figure out where it is, you know, oh, oh, oh not quite, oh. so I'll go here to here, yeah, oh, that's close enough, that's close enough. Now going this way, where's the middle gonna be? Probably right about here, so right about there is gonna be about the middle. So as long as I know where the middle is, right about here, then I can start to do my sketch. Now I did do a preview sketch, so you don't have to sit here and watch the sketch all day. Normally I use like a number three, um, micron, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Whoa. There, micron three, and those, that's a pretty good number to use to start with. These are archival, and they're black, and they're permanent. I'm going to use a nice dark one so you can see it. Where's my number? 12. Ooh, a 12. So this is going to be really dark so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to start with the outside and work my way into the sketch here. All right, all right, here we go. So I'm just gonna sketch along, and there's a couple schools of sketching here. One is more of the school of, um, you just kind of follow along, there you go. And just kind of just kind of trace it along, don't worry. Try not to lift your, you know, there you go. Contour drawing, that's it. Thank you, Wendy, for reminding me. I forgot, contour drawing, there we go. So can you just come on along, there we go. And just kind of move it along. Don't have to lift, just kind of go, kind of look at what you're doing, kind of go in there. And it gives it a different feel. It really does, it's kind of neat. Then you can come back and kind of clean it up. But it holds it together and it gives an interesting look to it. You know, and don't worry. 
Remember, sketches are for you. These are for your information when you're out in the field, when you're out on your vacations. No one is watching but you most of the time. And if people come by, just smile. <laughs> After a while, they'll go away. <laughs> and just, you know, don't worry. If you make, I'm going to make lots of mistakes to show you it's okay to make mistakes. It's not a big deal, you know. Just have fun. Just, and the fun that you have will be shown in your art here. They'll, you know, you can feel, you got to have some fun. So I'm, this is pretty loose, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's really loose. Oh, my gosh. There you go. Crazy. Yeah, well, it's kind of fun, but it's going to all come together. It comes in different parts. The first part is just kind of blocking in the major large shape. So when you're looking at your image, you want to look for the shapes. I see a triangle on top of a rectangle, a rectangle in there, lots of little rectangles. You don't have to put all the windows in. This has one, two, three, four, five, twenty, you know, sixteen windows. Oh, twenty windows. Yeah, that's it. I only taught second grade, so <laughs> a lot of multiplication. So, so you don't have to do that many windows. You can just cut those. Just do eight windows. Just do how many you feel. And then over here, we've got lots of weeds and wonderful garden over here going. And you can just this. There's all different kinds of techniques for showing uh, vegetation, and we'll go over those. This isn't really an architectural rendering, it's just having fun with the sketch and just kind of making the shape and, and design with it, all right? And then we always need some kind of a path to come into our, our little house here, okay? All right, and this comes on around, and this comes on around, and I'm gonna show you first of all, number one, if you're going to put on a the roof, like this is probably, might be like a shale, um, what would you call it, kind of a shag roof? Yeah, we'll call that a shag roof, what do you think? We'll vote, how many think it's a shag roof? Okay, shale roof, okay. All right, good, we're gonna go with that. So what we're gonna do is divide it in half, divide your roof right in half here. Zoop, in half. Now this is kind of a wiggly line in it, so I'm gonna do wiggly line. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. wiggle. <coughs> then we're gonna divide that wiggly line in half. Wiggle, 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 and then come across. Wiggle, 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 and as long as these are kind of your kind of guidelines, then you can divide these into half. Wiggle, 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 and you gotta you can work pretty fast. This is a this is a good thing to have a couple Starbucks and then just keep right on. Idea. Just have fun with it. Now. Once you've got this part done, that's the easy peasy part, then start with the very top row. And then this kind of comes down, you kind of, and then you're gonna go in between each one. So I'm coming down, and then I'm gonna go in between these. And then I come in between these and these. And so you just kind of come down and down, and see in, in just no time at all, you can knock in this wonderful roof right here, there you go. And if you need more little wiggly lines, just kind of add it. Remember, you're the architect, you get to decide. There we go. Sometimes you gotta change it up and that's okay. So just kind of put it in really, 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 really quick there. All right, so, and this helps hold the whole thing together. And we're gonna put a little watercolor on top of this. All right, and you don't have to use the uh, local color. You can pick any color your heart desires. So you can go with warm, high key colors. Those are nice, fun colors. And so I think that's what we're going to do. Then we have another beautiful window down here. Oh, you love windows. Yeah. And I'll show you how to knock these windows in in no time. And we've got some other little windows here and a doorway here. And I'll show you how to do steps. Oh, they're so much fun. So we've got all of this going on here. All right. So this is a wonderful beige color. Well, that's, that's okay, but if we just do beige with a little yellow ochre, that's not gonna be too exciting. So who has a favorite color? Permanent rose. Rose, ooh, rose is fun. Okay, let's add a little yellow to our rose. What would be another fun color? Blue, okay, how about, you want a cerulean blue? Or how about a? Pyrrole orange. Pyrrole orange, ooh, well you look at my palette here, huh? There you go. <laughs> I don't know what they are either. I just, 
I just squish them out of the tube and hope for the best. You know. All right, so, oh, there's my water right here. I've got so many things on here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, so we've got a little water here. Now, there's, you use a couple schools here. You can put a little water down and then throw it on in or do it uh, wet on dry. I like to do a combo. So I'm gonna toss a little here, over here, a little there, there we go, a little over here, la di da mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should have erased my pencil line first because that will cause it to have a little bit of graphite in there, but that's okay, that'll kind of gray it down a bit. So we do have a titch of the local color, which is probably kind of a little French ochre. Oh, there we go, a little French ochre. Oh, someone wanted the rose colored. Okay, this is kind of rosy, rosy. There we go. There we go, little rose. Just relax, it's gonna be okay. Breathe, breathe. <laughs> it's all right, it dries light. Don't worry. Oh, I spilled, don't worry, don't panic. It's okay, it's gonna be fine. There we go, there we go. Oh, but the secret is, you wanna save your whites. Have you heard that before? You wanna save your lights, yes, you know that. You've, you've got that down. So we're gonna put this down. Now we put a little blue, we can use a little, a uh, cerulean up here, and it's really nice with the pink, it kind of matches it. Did we put our yellow in? Oh, here's a little yellow. There we go, a little yellow, yellow. Oh, there we go. Just relax, don't worry. Here we go. Okay, so we so all these different fun colors, kind of smush them around. There we go, there we go. And I did want to save some white, so I'm going to lift up here, 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 here. And oh, I think we need a little more blue down here. There we go, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. There we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gonna be lovely. Now we need our trees over here, and we'll do a little green. Start with some light green first, and then a little darker green at the bottom here. So the green will rise up with wear, and it will go right into that. And don't forget to splatter. That's right. You need a little just a titch of splatter on your green. Gives it that leafy look. There you go. Leafy look there. Leafy look here. And we've got some wonderful, wonderful stonework here, right, right in there. So I guess they had their garage or their uh, pavement done. So we'll put a little, little something down there to bring. And we're going to bring some of that color into here too. Now, you don't have to do the sky. Remember, you're shape makers and shape breakers. So I've got a large shape right there, and that's enough of a shape to kind of hold it together there. So that's just kind of a fun little start to our building. So you can see I've changed it. I've gone from a, a more of a square. I've stretched it out a little bit. I've worked with the perspective. I put in fun colors and we've just started, yes. But if you're on a trip and you don't have much time, you can do this quickly and then get on the bus and go and the people won't be yelling at you. They'll say, oh, there they are, there they are. Okay, we're gonna have so much fun on Saturday, so I'm gonna give you a preview of what we're gonna be doing. Everyone's gonna get the famous machine, the perspective machine. How many have worked with these before? Oh, oh, yes, yes, okay. Everyone, I've made 20 of these. I spent all my Christmas vacation. Thank you, John. Just for you, so we're gonna have that. Okay, all right. Now the way this works is I have arbitrarily set two vanishing points. These vanishing points can be a mile apart or they can be really, really, really close. But in this case, it, it works if they're close. Now the uh, horizon line is your line of sight. So if you stand up or squint down, it's gonna be changing. So to make it easy peasy, I'm just put it right in the middle. There is gonna be my a horizon, my eye level line. Now if I want to make a little house or a building and you're we're always going to see lots and lots and lots of little buildings. So I'm going to decide, I'm going to put a building right here. The most important corner of the house is the corner that's closest to you. And I call that the anchor corner because everything, it comes off of this. Then everything from here on the right side is going to go to the right vanishing point. <gasps> That's right, and look at this. You can just bring this up here, and ooh, it goes right to the vanishing point. <gasps> oh, yes, indeed. And anything to the left goes where? To the left vanishing point. That's right, yes. So we just put that on there, and look at that. We're starting to get our house together. Now we can decide how large a house we want. We've got a wall there. Here's a wall over here, and we're gonna turn this into a she shed. <laughs> 
So we have to have uh, a pitch on it, a little roof on our she shed. So to find the center part, you just draw two diagonals or kitty cat lines, and then come up as high as you want. Now this, if you can go pretty high up, all right? That's where you get a pretty pitched roof. Arizona, we don't have too many roofs like that. So, and then this, oh, this comes to that very top here. Now to get it to perspective to go to the left, we're just gonna put this right up here and yada yada, there we go. And this line, actually there's another perspective and that's, these two will actually go somewhere up, but all we really have to do is kind of get them pretty parallel and maybe just a little bit bent over. And this is gonna come over just a titch and Viola, there you go, you've got a little house. But we don't have the windows yet, do we? No. no. So to do the windows and the doors, we're just gonna put a little circle on our anchor corner because this is gonna be the height of the windows and doors on this side, and this will be the height of the doors and windows on this side, and so they match up. When I was first drawing, I would put one window way down here and one window way up there, and people, you got you know small people in your house and large people. <laughs> so I said, no. So then you can just line it up. And this, oh, 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 yeah, this is gonna be kind of, oh, there we go. And if you wanna have a door that comes all the way down on this side of your she shed, there you go, there you go. And, and to be in perspective on this side, this side has to be the same as this. There we go. And you see the header of the door is the header of the window. And you can see over there how these kind of match up. Uh, the door over here and this over there it kind of matches up. These are, these, they raise these, but that's okay. So we've got this. Now if we've got a window way up here, it's going to be angled. Whoa. So this is going to show you the angle of that. It's not, you know, straight like a, it's going to have a little angle there. So you try and get it in the middle there. So this is going to be angled for perspective. To do your chimney, just make a line. Another anchor corner, this is gonna go this way, yada da, and this is gonna go the other way, down to the left, just bring it on down, this is gonna match here. You want the chimney to go over or just on one side of the roof? Over, okay, so it's gonna come over and there. So this is gonna go up and there. So, and everyone's gonna get to use one. Oh, this is so exciting, I can't wait, I can't wait. So, you really have to kinda get that get this in your brain of how this works. And then once you get it, we're gonna show you the secret way using a kitty cat ears. <laughs> later. <laughs> Did you sign up, Wendy? No, I'm not. Probably, come you, Saturday. You've seen this before. <laughs> oh, good. We'll put you through the torture there. Okay. All right. Now, this is still a little wet, still a little damp. So since that's damp, we've got to go on to something else, something a little more ambitious. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> We're going to come back to this, so don't go away. Here we go. So over there, we did a beautiful sketch there of Notre Dame, which is just about completed. How far are they out? Have you been watching and keeping track? Of, of the rebuild of the cathedral. I was there about 40 years ago. What's that? Oh yeah, it's, it's coming along. All right, so we're also going to do on Saturday, we're going to be using uh, razor blade and ink. So I'm going to do a little bit with the cathedral here. Now again, you can put in your cathedral with the perspective of a camera. You can change it up, you can tilt it, you can move it, you can do all different kind of things with it. The reason why we're doing the razor blade and ink is to give a really strong, heavy duty line to your work. All right, are you in the front row there? Are you uh, okay. yeah, Anyone going out to do <laughs> There we go. Shake it up a little bit. This, we're using India ink. It's permanent, waterproof, so we'll kind of square with it. There we go. <laughs> if you have any questions, yell out, scream, holler. I'm used to it. What do you call your little perspective piece? Oh, the machine? The machine. Perspective machine. <laughs> it's just a, um, you know, a board. I just went to Home Depot, get the paint sticks, drill the hole and then put little brads in there. And then just cut little pieces of mat board, and there you go. And at first I was using, I 
I initially took classes with Diane Maxey. Remember Diane Maxey? And she said we had to bring our underwear. And we would cut out the elastic, and we would stretch it across, and we would stretch it out. And we would oh my gosh. No. <laughs> and so, and so then later then I tried to get the string stretchy and you know use a, a paper clip and kind of pull it back. But it, it kept bending, you know, when you try and do a straight line. So I started using this, and this, this works pretty well. And you can, you know, you can use a whole a meter stick or a ruler, so you can go way out with these or just uh, attach it to something. But once you get the idea, it's just to get the idea of using perspective. And it's just very basic, just very, very basic. Okay. All right. So let's throw some ink on here. Oh, I'm so excited. <gasps> okay. Now, remember, this is a sketch. It's an image. It's just energy. It's just fun. It's excitement. So I'm going to take my razor blade, be sure to sign the waiver before we start, and uh, if you, with gloves, make sure that you've got gloves that uh, you can pull pretty tight, because if they come loose and they get in the ink, you're going to be dragging your fingers through there, which is kind of okay, that can be cool, but you mainly want to make sure that you do this. So I'm just going to put it right in there, you can kind of feel, oh, well, I'll show you a few things while we're right here. With the razor blade, you can go, you can make windows, go a little faster, whoop. So you can make different windows, you can do some fine lines, choop, 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 choop. you can do wavy lines, you can do straight lines, curvy lines. You can just, you just gotta, the secret though is putting pressure, kind of lean into it as you do things. You can do little windows, little windows, big windows, do, do, do. You can do all kinds of, it's like writing with a pen, but you just have to get the hang of it and just go pretty quickly. All right, all right, there we go, okay. And if your paper has some, uh, what should we call it? Tooth, thank you. Then you can really get a nice texture to it, come down different ways, and then right on that, come back and put some things on it. All right, and that's kind of how I did most of these to start with, to get a good start, because you get a really strong dark. And the dark is what it's all about. Dark against the light to get your focal points. So I'm just gonna come in and just go whoop de doo Oh, that looks too dark. Well, that's okay, don't worry, don't panic. It's gonna be okay. All right, so you can get these curvy curvies and see how fast you can get it in here. There you go. And these have little ones. Oh, this is too big. So I broke these and now I've got smaller ones. <gasps> how do you break them? Well, let me tell you. You're gonna take two pliers. Don't do this with your fingers. <laughs> you're gonna be in serious trouble. So I just put them in there and then twist, 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 twist. And, and they'll snap. And then you can get smaller ones. And then with the smaller ones, you can do smaller things. So I'm gonna come in here with these smaller little things. La -di -da -di -da -di -da. <laughs> there we go. All right, and you can just go right along, fast, 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 fast. There we go. All right, there we go. So I'm just getting shapes, value, since it's mainly black and white, and we'll throw some color in here later too. We're just gonna kinda get this one so it's got so much to do. But you can see how fast you can put in these darks. All right, all right, so we're just gonna zippity doo. And down here, they have all of this work. Once you do them a couple of times, you kinda of get the hang of where it's going. Now we've got these doors down here that are magnificent. All right, there we go. Did anyone do anything arty over the weekend? Go any movies, books? Has anyone been down to the uh, the Spirit of the West? I think there's a watercolor artist there who's got a show there. Did you go see it? No, but I've seen pictures. I plan to go. The pictures are gorgeous. Yeah. So I yeah I've heard quite a few people down there and they really enjoyed it. So. It's down by across from the Scottsdale Artist School in that area of oh, Scottsdale. Yeah, that's a great place. Okay. Yeah, it is. Now you can also go pretty fast. Dip, 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 dip. There you go. There's 400 years of art right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of knocking out. There you go. Those are actually the, the kings of. I think they were all French kings in there, kind of connected. 
All righty. So we've got all this going on. So we want some shadows coming down. This is really nice. You can just bring it down. Just you really got to put some pressure on there to kind of pretend there's some. There we go. Does that thing dry quickly? It does. It, yeah, it does dry pretty fast, especially in Arizona on a hot day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know really. So you can go pretty fast. And you want to have broken lines so that the viewer can move through your art. You don't want them to be held back in any way. So, and also you want to do directions with them, kind of move them up and down, and do all kinds of fun things with it. So you just kind of knock it up, have fun, and relax. There we go. And we'll be coming back with this. We'll go back and forth. And probably by Saturday we'll have it done. So. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So we're just kind of knocking in some of this, and we'll come back with detail with the fine liners and the tombow. Ooh, we're about ready to start the tombows. I can't wait. I can't wait. This going to be so exciting. All right. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. Oh, oh, we've got shadows here too. Some shadows. Yeah, all these old work here. All right, wow, boy, it's looking pretty good, huh? Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna come back to this in just a minute. We're letting it gonna dry, and then we're gonna put some more paint on this, and then we're gonna keep going. Now, when you're out sketching, you can, you can get all kinds of paints and materials. Uh, they sell lots of travel brushes um, online. Those, these are really nice. Uh, this is Escoda. Uh, Perla, it's got a nice uh, synthetic. They make some really nice synthetics now. You don't have to get the um, sables. The sables are still pretty expensive. And this is called a ninja roll. Ninja roll. And you can put all your things in there, roll them up. I like it because I don't lose as many materials when I'm out. And you can put your fine liners in there and your top bows and you're all ready to go. Okay. Oh, back to our sketch over here. Here we go. All right. So it's starting to dry. Now we can come back and put in more details. And I'm going to show you how to do the tombows because it's so much fun. All right. <laughs> all right. Now the tombows come in all different flavors. But we're going to use kind of the ones that are more uh, values. And the tops will tell you lightness to darkness. Mm -hmm. The dark is really, 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 really dark, and the light is really, really light. And as they start to fade out, you think you're gonna throw it away. Hold on to it, because it's, this can become this one, mm -hmm. a lighter one, and then you just use that. Okay, that feels light enough, there we go. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to do some shadow. So as I come back to my mm -hmm. sketch, my photo, there's shadow under here, shadow under there, all of this is shadow. So the light is coming from the right. So I'm gonna put shadow under there. And this is easy peasy, hopefully it's gonna go. Oh, oh yeah, look at that, see you can shadow pretty quickly. Just knock in the shadow, put some pressure on there. Ooh, 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 there we go. So you can get some shadows pretty quickly. You can also do it with um, using hatch marks, or just do this really quickly. And there we go. Now, if that's not dark enough for you, that's not dark enough. Okay, so let's go to another one. But you may want to test them out sometimes to see how dark it's going to go. Oh, that one I think is shot. There are we the tombows ink? Tombows are, they're water soluble. Water markers. Water markers, thank you. Yeah, they're just, this old, old, old. And you can get them online, you can get them at Michael's with a coupon. You can try different things. Oh, this one's going to work. So this is coming a little darker here. Now, if you go over it with the same one, it will become darker. So you don't have to sometimes go to a different darker one. Now, if I want to knock in these windows pretty fast, you can see basically they're just little, little squares. But they do have different colors, different amounts of value in each one. So you can really sometimes do a lot of fun with that. Or you can just knock them in like... Oh, let's go for the dark side. Ooh, 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 dark. Here we go. Here we go with the dark side. And just go zip, 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 zip. 
So we can get it, get these in pretty quickly. All right, so one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can knock these in really fast, and you can see how powerful these darts are. All right, you can try to twist them. Just do four, just as many as you want. All right, you can do one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. So these windows are so, 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 so important. Now, we have a lot of stonework on the front, and I'm gonna do the stonework exactly as I did the tile work up there on the, on the top, which is to start with a line down the middle and then work from there. Alrighty, so I'm gonna use the number three. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna come right down the middle. And then another line. Now the stonework you can do a couple ways. You want big stones or large stones? Small, big, large, what do you want? Larger. Big stones, all right, so here we go. I'm just gonna start here. I'm gonna change my plan. <laughs> all you have to remember is to, when you make one stone, put the next stone in between that. So I can come here, so, this is going to be in between that one, and that's in between. It. So if I've got a line here, I can just go in between those and just keep going down. And you can do this really, really fast. You can do big, large stones. There we go. Has anyone taken a trip to England or Scotland or Ireland? Yeah. In, in, out to the Cotswolds or anywhere exciting? All right. There we go. So you, you can fill it in pretty quickly. As long as the owner doesn't find out, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I'll break, make these a little larger so we can move on a little faster. There we go. And then we're going to add texture to these. There are several ways you can do it. We'll start with the tombow and then we will come back with the fine liner to add texture. Because right now it's all pretty much, this dried pretty quickly, but if we want to add texture, take the lightest one, which was this one, and just shade some of these. Just give them a little shady shade, there we go. Okay. Kind of randomly go around. This ages the house, the owner is not gonna to be too happy. <laughs> That's okay. So just kind of, Kind of gives it effect of, of wearing. Oh, we forgot the bricks on the up on the chimney here. We haven't had too many fires. I think we had a fire once in our house. I forgot to open the flue. That was it. <laughs> You're not having any more fires. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lost that battle. There we go. Okay. It was just as well. All right, okay, so just kind of put in some bricks. Again, divide it in half and then just kind of go from there. All right, so there's just lots and lots of little squares, so you have to get used to making lots of little shapes. There we go. All right, there we go. And we, oh, we're gonna really make this fancy. This has the interesting ones. Now you can also, just also use hatch marks to create some interesting textures. Maybe here and there, maybe one and very, I'm using kind of a darker pen so you can see, but you can actually use a light one. Here's our door, Just put a little texture on our door. And if we want to come back with a little more shadow, I think we probably do need a little more shadow on there because, um, because the tomboy dried pretty light. Don't worry, don't panic, relax. It's gonna be all right, it's okay, there we go. It's all right, Whoop. yep, don't worry. Remember, we're here to have fun. Here we go. And this needs a little shadow. Here we go. Now, if you're worried and you say, oh, that's too much shadow, well, just take your magic brush and you can actually dilute it. You can kind of, yeah, ooh, you can kind of put it on there and kind of bring it down a little more, have some fun. See? Ooh, all the neat things you can do. Oh, that's right, we've got some shadow action over here, the shadow action coming down there. And then you can actually probably kind of lift it up too if, if you're really that concerned, but I'm not that concerned. Okay, then we're gonna come around with our trees. We, we can actually even do a little negative 
under our trees. There we go. All right. Oh, they had some big bushes. Those were um, hydrangeas, weren't they? <laughs> some pink hydrangeas. What were they? Oh, what happened to my pink? <laughs> there we go. That's sort of pink. No, that's not pink. Here's some blue there. There we go. Ah, dee -dee -dee -dee. Okay. Where'd the pink go? How about this go for red? There we go. Did they have red hydrangeas? All right. Now, in front of the house, there's going to be a walkway, and we can do the same thing with the walkway. We can make this walkway into large bricks or stones, and in this case, there's a three. This is a good size, a three. So I'm going to go for stone work. So I can do large stones, small stones, and so as they come towards you, they'll get a little larger. It's good to let them be kind of oblong so it feels like that they are setting down. And then you can come back in with some darks between these to give them a feeling of dimension, texture. And again, you can take your Tombow and darken a few of these to give them that rocky look. There we go. And you can also use the same thing with your pen to come between some of these lines to create the mortar between these, and these will also give you a little more texture there. There we go. Er, er, er. And we can kind of bring in, kind of went pretty dark right away. There we go. There we go. What else do we have on this beautiful house here? Let's see. Oh, we've got over here. Now, this is a arch, and we still can put this arch in using a smaller pen, and again, just it's stonework. It's just arched over, and if you just do, if you think of a group of stones rather than do one individually, it will work a little better. It will be more consistent in what you're doing. Uh, up here, there's a little more stonework here, and if you keep moving it in a, a gesturely way, then it'll be fine. Or like, more like a contour drawing. Try not to lift your pen and just keep going. And if you look at a lot of other uh, sketchers, you'll see their work and you'll say, oh my gosh, what a mess. <laughs> but it's pretty neat, it's kind of interesting. And even up here in the uh, different types of tile and shade roof, you can kind of put some more darks in between the mortars there. That kind of brings it out a little bit. Okay, now I, I feel that I do need a little bit more color, I think, on the roof. So what color do you think we should add? A little brown, a little uh, gray, a little... What would you like? Burnt sienna? Burnt yeah. sienna, okay. Burnt sienna, or, oh, I know. How about a little quinacridone gold? <gasps> yeah, ooh, 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 okay. Here comes a little quinacridone gold. There you go, ooh, yeah, that kind of blends it in kind of nice here. Yeah, that's kind of adds a little bit. And we can put a little, even the chimney, maybe a little uh, quin, different, we'll kind of mix it up. But once you put the tombow, tombow down, it's gonna, things will kind of blend in with it. So you have to be really careful about that. It will start to blend. Okay, kind of bring that tree together. A little more dark over here. I was just working with a lot of indigo. So I got a little indigo on my palette, a little dark. Thing. And we need a little bit more of a splatter. <laughs> Gotta have a lot of sound effects. There we go. <laughs> and we need some splatter down here just to titch, not too much, just a little bit. There we go. There we go. And we can lift some of that. It gets carried away. But it gives it a little pizzazz, gives it a little energy, gives it a little excitement. Um, let's see, what else can we add? Ooh, 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 we've got our, ooh, this is a nice dark one here, so we can work around our shutters here with the shadow. So we've got a little more shadow work in here, and we can put a little more um, detail on the door. Come in there. <coughs> What I'm going to do really quick to show you is the steps. You see that on this house, they're not 
you really don't get to see the step. But on a step, a step comes out towards you. So I'll use this one. So if you have the first step that comes out, then the next one is going to come out towards you. All right. That's going to come down. The next one comes out towards you in perspective. And then you can bring your lines down to come out towards you and in that direction. Okay, and then they come down. All right, and then you can have more lines coming out. So this is direction which leads you up into it. And then usually the, the part that's down is going to have a little shadow on it. So you can kind of shade this quickly. There we go. So it gives that feeling of coming down on your steps. Let's see if your house has lots and lots and lots and lots of steps. Okay. Oh, we need a little more green over here, don't we? All right. <laughs> oh, there's green over here. We got a little green there. Squishy green. Oh, oh, a little more dark. Here we go. Be sure to ask questions. Holler, scream. There we go. We're more there. We're there. We're here. We're there. And so you really have to decide, is this going to become a sketch or is it going to become a watercolor painting? So sometimes you have to stop and make a decision. Now there are some really interesting little pieces underneath here where the white or the light of the brickwork pops out. And you can do that by putting in darks around it. I mean, really, really, really dark. So we'll go to the back to the dark side here. This dark, and go. I should, someone should go through my markers, huh? There we go. Sometimes it's easier just to go buy another set. There we go. So I'm just putting in more detail. And the more you look, the more detail you're going to see, which is a lot of fun. So I'm just putting in some detail there, looking around. Um, it's not a whole lot along the bottom. There we go. And you can even come in here with more darks. Just have some fun there. But it's not a whole lot to this house. But we're going to do the pink house from Savannah, I believe it is, and some other houses. And if you want to have another sketch that you want to do, bring that on in too. On Saturday, we can work on that. And we'll just have a blast. We'll just have so much fun. Now, you, again, you can also come in with more detail, just with little dots. Little dots over here, a couple dots over here, more texture with the line work, very fine line over here. So you just be more creative in creating more little lines and things to build up your house. How's it looking, Karen? Okay. All right. And then you can start putting little birds along the top here and little... <laughs> you can just go on and on and on and on. I'll put a little more shadow up. A little shadow. There you go. So... All right. So I have some light area here, and this is with the lightest light against the darkest dark. So that will become the focal point. Okay, and we have a path coming in here. And again, just like with regular watercolor, you can use the pins to make a little more weeds coming on in there. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. <laughs> now we're going to go back to our Notre Dame. All right, here we go. So we're going to put some paint on this one. How much more time do we have? Three hours. Another 15. 15 minutes. Only 15 minutes? Well, we're staying till 6. All right. It's 5.15 now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we're going to throw some paint on here. And then continue on now that this is dry. I'm going to use a flat brush and just put on more color. Just going to so I want to put in some shapey color. Looks like maybe some of that's not quite all the way dry. Let's, even if it's not dry, sometimes the ink will kind of add to it. So let's go in with lots of fun color here. We do have some uh, ochre here. Kind of throw it in and let the colors mix together. Use lots and lots of water. Let it flow. Let it mingle. Here's some orange. Whoa, look at that. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, Woo. 
How about a little blue next to that? Oh, oh, oh no, what have you done? What have you done there? Well, it was a, it's a, it's a rainy day in Paris. Actually, that's kind of cool. And instead of swishing around, we're going to take it on our trail here. Remember, art is a journey. And the painting will talk to you. It'll tell you. It'll speak to you. <laughs> Go away! <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep going. All right, here we go. We're gonna put a little more blue on it. There we go. Okay. So, so that and oh, it's starting to get. And you can throw salt into this. You can throw all kinds of fun things. But again, what you want to remember is to re, to think of your lights and darks and just let the whole thing come together. There you go. And we're gonna continue. And we'll put something on the side to hold it together, make it a gestalt of a painting, the full thing there. <gasps> okay. And we want some light. We have some lights here, but maybe we want to focus up here a little. Just a titch, just a titch in there. Titch over here. And we probably want a little more color on our, on our doors down here. There we go. That's kind of puddling a little bit, so we'll pick up our puddle. And there we go. John, is that just our paper? This is, thank you for asking, I think it's Langton, what is it, uh, Langton watercolor paper, and I don't think it's real watercolor paper. I think it's more of a paper pulp. Okay. It's something where I found somewhere. <laughs> if you re a really nice uh, sketchbook is from Chief Joe's Kilimanjaro. They make a nice sketchbook, 140 pounds. And, or you can just make your own out of, uh, you know, out of different types of paper. You can, the rough paper is hard on the tips of your fine liners. If you use soft, hot press paper, it's a little more forgiving on your, um, on your pens and things. So you have to kind of be, be careful with that. What do you want us to bring <gasps> I'm so glad you asked. Good segue. Well, you're going to need maybe a couple fine liners, maybe a number three and number five, a couple of these. You can get these just individual at some of the local art stores. And some Tombow pens, maybe a light, medium, and a dark. Uh, bring up just a little watercolor. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. They make a bazillion different types of little sets to go out sketching with. So um, you just need a few little colors to work with. As far as brushes, Maybe a number 10 or maybe a number 8 and maybe a little flat brush. That's And, oh, I'll have all the razor blades. Uh, uh, we've got razor blades. We've got ink. You might want to make a, a little container to bring your ink in. To, that, you know, that'll, I'll put the ink in like a tuna fish can or a cat paint can or what else could you put in with that? Um, and gloves. Gloves, yeah. I do have some gloves, but you might want to bring your own if you've got, I've got petite hands, so <laughs> I use the small ones. <laughs> so, yeah, so that way, because uh, this is pretty, it, you know, it's going to be on there for a while. I used to do this downtown first Friday, and then I'd go teach the next day with my black hands, you know, with ink all over it. So I said, oh. All right. So we put a little color on this, and as we come back to our sketch over here, we just want to kind of look it over and decide what we're going to do. And probably the only thing is to just maybe a little splatter. And if we want, we can put little birds across the top. And um, ooh, 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 maybe just a little bit more texture on the roof. And so you just come back in with more fine line and just kind of keep going. I mean, you can spend. I first started off teaching sketching, doing the five minute sketch. Mm -hmm. Then it went to the 10 minute sketch, then 15 minute, then half hour. Now we're up to like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> so people want to spend their time and that's fine. You know, just take your time, enjoy it. You know, and just kind of keep working on things, working on shape, working on technique, working on textures. The texture is the big thing. And um, you know, just think of the grain of wood, think of the shadow, where things are going, between, and then use the 
spine liners to uh, put a little shadow where you want. Um, and we'll, we'll work on large windows because those are a lot of fun. Oh, let me show you right now. I'm so excited to show you. <gasps> this is so much fun. All right, so a big window. Here's a window. So let's say we have a fun window because a lot of the really cool Victorian homes are a lot of fun to do. They're just a hoot and a holler. So here we go. Here's our little window. All right. So we're gonna, I'm going to make a little wavy line down here. This is going to be a curtain. And to do that, we're going to take the other fine liner. This is a number three. And sometimes you have to slant your paper and just draw a bunch of lines. So you can, you can make curtains, you can make lace, you can make all kinds of things for your inside your window. And then inside the window, if the light's coming from here, there's going to be a shadow on the inside of the woodwork there coming across. So you're going to have that shadow coming. And then down below inside, it's going to be dark in our house noir. You know what's going on down there. And then you can, there might be even a little more shadow under there. And then, then there'll be a shadow on the side over here, a shadow underneath. There we go. So, and then, then you can decide maybe, right, some of this is open. Maybe some of this is not all together. So you can have a little dark between these. There you go, kind of curve out a little bit or come on in. So you can kind of work with creek, all kinds of fun little windows all over. So that's kind of fun too. All right. <coughs> so you can do all kinds of windows, all kinds of doors, all kinds of brickwork, all kinds of stonework, detail, color. So we're just going to have a lot of fun. All right. Are we done? Yeah, you can. Uh-oh.